Remember, All Saints Day is November 1st. All Souls Day is November 2nd. It's the time when the fall harvest ends and the chill of winter starts. What do you say we put on a disguise and scare away some haunting souls? This is All Request History. If you've ever wondered about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Subscribe here, then send us your request in the comments. If chosen, we'll produce, record, and post your history request. This holiday edition of All Request History is the history of Halloween. Halloween's origins date back centuries. Traditions mostly from the 8th and 9th century Scotland to Ireland, where Druids, Pagans, and Celts celebrated Samhain, which means summer's end. This event was a fire festival that lasted three days to celebrate the ending of the fall harvest and the beginning of the winter. It may or may not have been intended as an evil celebration, but it would sometimes become one. It could be because the folks who celebrated Samhain believed that during this time, the dead would come back to visit their homes. They would build large bonfires and dress in costumes made from animal skins to disguise themselves from any evil spirits. Many homes would leave their doors open to townspeople all night to invite costume celebrants inside. Here they would offer them dinner, food, or treats. Some would even set a place at the table as a gesture of goodwill for returning spirits. Meanwhile, Christians believed this time to be a somber celebration, but not particularly scary. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as All Saints Day to honor all Christian saints. Like many Christian celebrations, the night before becomes a time for preparation. October 31st was known as All Hallows' Eve, as Hallows is another word for holy. In the 11th century, Catholic priest Odillo Clooney wanted good people to pray for the dead souls thought to be waiting in purgatory to enter into heaven. So it was declared that November 2nd was officially All Souls Day. Moving into the 1700s and 1800s, the North American continent and its British colonies were becoming the United States. Immigration introduced a lot of cultures that brought their traditions and their rituals with them. The Irish and Scottish celebrated their fire festival, Samhain, and the Catholics practiced the three days of Hallow's Eve, All Saints, and All Souls Days. The Catholics celebrated as a somber three days, and the Celts and the Druids spent these days, let's just say, not as somber. The common ground between the two began to develop as towns and villages hosted bonfires and town greens. Immigrants would share the stories of the old country around the fire. The Irish Samhain celebrants offered tokens or treats to folks walking by in costume. Traditional Catholics offered shortbread biscuits made as prayer offerings during All Souls Day called soul cakes. As people wandered, they used the fall's abundant gourds carved out and used as lanterns to light their way. You know, pumpkins. One story the Irish brought with them was that of a drunkard named Stingy Jack who was chased home from a pub by the devil. Jack tricks the devil into climbing a tree, then carves a cross into the trunk, trapping Satan at the treetop. Stingy Jack then makes a pact with the devil to never take his soul. The devil agrees, but every year on that night, October 31st, he throws hot ashes and coals at Jack. Jack then collects them and puts them into a pumpkin carved with a daunting smile just to taunt back at Satan, you know, a jack-o'-lantern. In the 1900s, following the tradition of passing out soul cakes for goodwill, American children quickly learned that dressing up in costume and going door to door would get them some free goodies. When answering the door, people would give kids homemade cakes, apples, nuts, or popcorn balls. In the United States, as the 20th century moved forward, traditions became more common. Jack-o'-lanterns, costumes, and children going door to door to collect offerings or, you know, free goodies. But it's during this time that these little ghosts, witches, and warlocks developed the trick or treat. Although originally from parts of Britain and Ireland long ago called mumming, it's the act of performing door-to-door -to, -door to be paid for your performance with food. After about 1920 in the U.S., it was called trick or treat. The term trick or treat and mischief night tradition came almost at the exact same time. Kids knocking on doors hoping to get free stuff would dance, tell a joke, or a story. But after a stellar performance, some would get treats that were not so stellar. And even still, some folks might leave the lights off and not even answer the door. Well, kids being kids would then vandalize their property. 
so trick or treat became code for give me a treat or you'll be tricked. In the 1950s and 60s, candy was inexpensive to buy in bulk and became an obvious choice for free handouts. Large candy manufacturers noticed a dramatic sales increase in October and started marketing their product using Halloween themes. Home decorations like hay bales and jack-o'-lanterns were on the rise, and now with Halloween's commercial success, almost everyone was home in this special night. With neighbors visiting each other, Halloween parties became very popular. These parties often included a large wash basin filled with apples. Bobbing for apples, or apple bobbing, came from the old school British tradition claiming that if a young bachelor could retrieve an apple from a tub of water, then marriage was in his future. Also, if a bachelorette could catch this apple, she would put it under her pillow and have dreams and visions of her future husband. As the U.S. enters into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, through the commercialization of costumes, candy, and home decorations, Halloween became one of the most celebrated holidays. Now, it's just fun for all ages. With the U.S. moving into the 2000s, there's haunted mansions, hayrides, and scary excursions and attractions, corn mazes, elaborate pumpkin carving, trunk or treat school parties, and sophisticated Halloween electronic decorations. Current traditions have changed most of the religious origins into simple church basement parties and trunk or treat celebrations. Now, legends of scary souls in purgatory are mostly stuff of Hollywood movies and the occasional slumber party ghost story. Here in the 21st century, most all myths associated with Halloween have been dispelled, but there is a few souls who might still believe and think that there's some truth to... Wait, is there someone standing behind you? Well, thanks for checking in. Are you curious? Leave your request in the comments, then subscribe here so you'll know when you're on All Request History.